There's the bigger fish. Not sure what it is. What do we got? Hey everyone, Mike from Fisher MN here. You know what? Sometimes we hit some slow periods in the summer. That's what happened to me on a recent trip to southern Minnesota. I was all geared up, looked at the DNR site, found a couple of lakes that had some white bass in it, and I thought, you know what? I want a new species in the boat. So I packed up, got up at about 3.30 in the morning, got down to my first lake right before sunup, and I traveled around that lake for about two and a half hours, along with a lake it's connected to, and I only caught one sunfish. It was a very slow day. I always appreciate being on a new lake and trying to figure it out, but boy, that first lake, I just couldn't figure it out down south there. Um, fishing in the Faribault area, tons of lakes to pick from. So I took a little break in the morning and I went to Cabela's in Owatonna and stocked up on a few things I knew I would need and went to uh, my second lake just north of Faribault. And you know me, I try all my usual things and right off the bat, I got a nice frog bass. And I'm thinking, here we go. We got a lake going here. I could see it had a nice reed island right in the middle of the lake. And I thought, man, those, those frog bass are gonna be jumping in the boat. Well. About 45 minutes of frog fishing later, I knew I was going to have to do something else. So what do I do when the fishing is slow? Well, I take out what I call the yellow. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I fished that lake, and then you'll see how the day unfolded. Um, when I talk about yellow, I'm talking mainly about gulp two inch jigging grubs. I love the bright yellow color. Um, this bait usually outperforms live bait. You've seen me fish with my buddy Chad and he was a die-hard live bait fisherman. Worms or leeches or whatever. Um, and he has come to know that the yellow really gets the fish going. So there's many trips where he and I don't have any live bait in the boat anymore, even when we're going for panfish. So gulp grubs. Now, my main go-to bait has been the power bait fire tiger grub. I still call these the yellow, but you know, it's got a little bit of other colors on it. Um, and my main reason for going to these whenever I can is that they're more hardy. I would say on the gulp jigging grubs, you can catch anywhere between one and maybe five or six fish, but they're a lot softer and they get uh, torn off the hook or the tail gets bitten off. These are super hardy. Um, if you watched my Pokegama video from Grand Rapids where I'm catching a bunch of perch, this is what I used and I used maybe, one, maybe two, but I think it was one the whole day catching all those perch. So. Just by the nature of um, how hardy they are, this is my go-to. When the fish are aggressive, definitely I'm going to be using a power bait, two inch. And um, the fire tiger has just been my color. I've got yellow, I've got white, but I love this fire tiger pattern. Now last year, panfish expert Chad told me about these kalins, and they're called um, crappie scrubs. And this is the John Deere color. And these were pretty magical for some um, crappies. So if you're looking price-wise, Gulp is anywhere between uh, five and eight dollars for one bag. Power bait, depending on if you can find it on sale, um, can be anywhere from two fifty to maybe five dollars. And then um, these John Deere crappie scrubs, you can get them at Walmart for about two dollars a package. So you have a lot of range and price when you're fishing with the yellow. After all 
that yellow fishing, I was missing some jigs, so I thought I'd tie some new jigs. I find as I get older, tying them outside works a lot better because I can see the, the eyelets. So there they are. And I wanted to show you what I do when I'm uh, preparing my uh, jig leaders. So the first thing I do is I get some fluorocarbon line. This is Vanish. You can see it's been around for a while. It was a pretty big spool and I'm getting towards the end. So I've tied a lot of these jigs. Um, I like the six pound fluorocarbon line for the, the leader. And on one end, I'm gonna have a small barrel swivel. And on the other end, I'm gonna tie on a 16th ounce. It's a weight I always use no matter what season. 16th ounce um, yellow jig and I like the ones with the, um, the defined eyes which means it has an orange dot and then a black dot. So these are going to be on each end and we're going to get some line in the middle. If you've watched my videos before you know I like a polymer knot. In a polymer knot you just go through the eyelet Pull yourself some line out and go back through the eyelet and keep this loop here. Then you're going to wrap it around your finger, push it back through. Don't cinch it down yet because you have to go back over the hook. And then when you pull it tight, it's a great knot because the knot tightens on itself. So that knot is not going to come loose. Cut off the tag end. Definitely there's some videos out there about polymer knots online that might be a little more clear than what I'm doing here. Then you take the barrel swivel, you go through the eyelid of the barrel swivel, and repeat it. Just like we did with the hook, you go back through you wrap it around your finger, push the loop back through the other loop, back around whatever you're tying on, you pull it tight, and you got a nice tight knot there. Trim off the tag end, and there you go, you have your leader. You have your barrel swivel on this end, which will attach to your main line, and you've got your jig on this side which you'll be putting your grub on. In fact I'm going to show you the correct way to put a grub on the 16th ounce jig head. Many of you already know how to do it but I'm going to show you, you those of you who haven't done this before. You are gonna take your hook, you're gonna find the very center of that jig and when you thread it on you want the hook and the tail to make a W. So the hook is, the tail is gonna go this way, the hook's gonna go that way. Show you what that looks like. On the very center, a lot of these grubs have a, a line down the middle. You wanna get lined up, poke it out there. You're gonna push your jig head down, and there you go. See how the hook goes this way, the tail goes that way? That's how you put your grub on. Then you can fish in many ways. I love drifting with these. If you got a nice um, kind of drifting breeze, just a gentle breeze, let them just let your line out and let them go to almost to the bottom, and you're going to be getting those fish. Pretty simple setup, but it works, and it might save you having to keep some live bait in your boat. One more little tip for you: you see at the very end of the jig head how there's no paint over the eyelet. It always pays to spend just a little bit more to get those that aren't painted over. So check them out when you buy them. It's not a huge deal if there's paint over it, but you just have to chip that paint away before you can thread the line through. Um, the ones I'm using today are uh, Bass Pro Shops jig heads. 16th ounce, um, and they've got that yellow with a, a kind of a reddish or orangish eye. And the black dot in the middle of the eye is important too to me too. I always like those when they have the full eye on them. So I'm all replenished with these jig heads, but I want to show you the day I had down south 
because at the second lake I went to, things really turned around when I put on, put on the yellow. In fact, I ended up catching eight species of fish. Well, seven and a half, because one got right off right by the boat, but I'll say I hooked eight species of fish. Can you think of what they are right now? Well, here's what it looked like. There we go. Let's get started with the frog bass. New Lake, Southern Minnesota, first frog bass. When life gives you a reed island, fish it. I got deep water right off the edge here. Haven't seen that hardly at all this summer. Probably would have been a really good early in the morning lake. That's okay, we're here now. There we go. Hey, it's crappy. <whistles> Two species angler. There we go. Southern Minnesota crappie. Get some action going here. There we go. Well. Not a monster. Try species angler. After our first stop this morning, we are on a roll. There we go. Look at that, three fish on the spot, three different fish. Crappie bass and sunfish. There we go. There's the bigger fish. I'm not sure what it is. What do we got? Oh my. Dogfish. Oh. Darn it. That was our shot at the dogfish. Uh, maybe there's more. Had him hooked just right too. Until he came off, I guess. <laughs> There we go. There we go, northern. Well, had the northern. So, I mean, if you count the dogfish in the northern, that's, what is that, six species? There we go. We got crappy. Hey! There we go. How about the original species I came for? A white bass. There it is. 
My first white bass. Nice. Not quite big enough to keep, but we will take it. So if I get that dogfish in, we're already on a seven species day. All right. That's pretty cool. The DNR survey said they get up to 17 inches in this area, so man, that would be quite a fight. There's a fish. I don't even want to guess what it is. Oh, there we go. Perch. Perch, perch. What do we got? It's either a bass or a white bass. It's a bass. Largemouth bass. I think every new spot you get to catch one of everything. Very polite lake. There we go. Seems like five feet is where I'm having the most action. There we go. Looks like a good sunny. There's a nice fish. There we go. What do we got? All right, nice crappie. We got a big fish on. Line's moving in slow motion. Well, not huge, but could it be our first northern getting in the boat? All right. There we go. Well, you had your time to fight, buddy. Fight's over. All right, so I've been talking to myself here. My camera wasn't on. If you know how to hold one of these babies, put in the comments, let me know. Cause I know they have some sharp fins and I was kind of trying to get my hand around it. I know the mouth isn't, it's kind of like sandpaper, like a bass's mouth. But hey, how about another species? When the fishing is slow, take out the yellow. There we go. That uh, bullhead felt different. I don't believe my hat camera's on when I was bringing it in. You can just tell when you have a bullhead because they start to roll. Now I'm not saying a bullhead and a dogfish are a prized possession, but you know what? I love the variety. And if you're not running this yellow gulp yet, you gotta start doing that. So many times I'll be out with a buddy fishing and if we're just out panfish fishing, we're seeing a lot of people move off their spot because they're not catching anything. And we're catching them hand over fist. It outperforms live bait in most cases. In fact, I only have one or two trips a year where I use any live bait. The rest of the time, it's always the yellow. Alright, I'm going to go find a lake and put these to use. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope to see you on the water.